Hey everyone, and welcome back to the 46th episode of the Boy Oh Boy Railway Podcast. Today, we don't have a guest this week, as I'm trying to pair up a few for the, in the coming weeks. So we're just going to be talking about everything that is going on in the world of sport, starting off with the BBL. Perth Scorch is sitting on top, will be top very nicely. They start off their campaign against the Brisbane Heat with a really good win there. Then they really demolished the Strikers when Colin Munro just powered a big century. Their middle order is really classy. They've got Mitch Marsh coming in at three, Colin Munro, Laurie Evans, Ashton Turner, Ashton Agar. And then up the top, they've got Curtis Patterson, who's playing some really good cricket at the minute. And Josh Inglis hasn't really found some form, but once he gets firing, they'll be a very tough side to beat. Then moving on to the sixes, if it, I believe if it wasn't for all the injuries, I believe they'd be sitting very comfortably on top at the minute. They're such a well-rounded team. Their openers are probably the best in the tournament, apart from McDermott and Wade. They've got Philippi and Vince that just set the turn early. Then we've got Moses Enriquez coming in at three. He's probably the best number three in the comp, apart from Mitch Marsh. And then they've got like Silk, Christian, Hughes, who are very classy batsmen, and their bowling attacks just got better since Abbott's coming back. Ben Menenti, I believe, will be a big loss with the very handy off spinners that he bowls. Taking, but Shabad Khan is a very big pickup for them, can bat in the middle order, and is a very good off spinner. I'd say an upgrade for Ben Menenti. But their pace bowlers are just unreal. Hayden Kerr, very good in the middle of the bat. He's been bowling unreal as well. Sean Abbott, leading wicket taker until Hurricanes game last night. They've got. Ben DeWarshus, Dan Christian can bowl a few overs. So yeah, they're really rounded. And then it sort of gets a bit closer. Hobart at third. Sort of started off really slow, but sort of found some form apart from the game against the Heat yesterday. Ben McDermott's easily looked the best batter in the tournament so far. He's just striking the ball to all parts of the ground, striking it very cleanly. Matty, even Matty Wade hasn't found a lot of form. He hasn't made a whole heap of runs. So they'd hope that he can fire. And then Darcy Short, this is probably the worst campaign I've ever seen from him. A lot of games he's just striking it under 80 and not really damaging. But the Hurricanes bowling attack's been really good. I've been really surprised with Tom Rogers, leading wicket taker this year. He just bowls a good line and length. And then you got Ellis there as well. Riley Meredith. Sandeep's bowling well as well. And you've still got Scott Bowen to come back. You've got Joel Paris to come back. So it's really well-rounded side there for the Hurricanes. In at fourth spot is Sydney Thunder, just the one point behind the Hurricanes. And if they win, they'll go up into third. They've, they haven't had the best start to the tournament, as they'd be expecting. Hales hasn't really fired. They've been a hit with um, COVID pretty heavily, which certainly hasn't helped. So they haven't really had to gel games together, which once they get their full squad back, if if it does happen, then they'll be a really damaging side throughout the rest of the year. Moving on to the Heat, very inconsistent. I highly doubt they make finals. They bowled well against the Hurricanes and got lucky that the Hurricanes didn't bat very well. Still got the job done, so you got to give credit to them. If Lynn doesn't fire, then they're not making a big score. Like... He needs more help around it. They've tried to switch Bryant. He's useless. I think you should drop him. He's had that many chances for him. But the thing is, who do you bring in? Jack Wilhelmus should be playing. I don't know why he hasn't been. I know Liam Guthrie got hit for the most runs the other night in BBL history. But he's a young fella. He's got to, you got to give him confidence. Pick him. He's been bowling well apart from that. So pick him with confidence as he's bowled well throughout the tournament so far. Xavier Bartlett's bowled really well and Ben Duck has been a really surprise package for the Heat and has really turned out the way that they hoped. On sixth is Stars. Talk about being hit with COVID. They've got like 10 players out at the minute and it's basically the Max, Maxwell show and if he... Stornis hasn't done a lot while he's played. Joe Clark's in some really good form. I really like the way he blats. That's very conventional. Plays shots all around the wicket. So he's been a very good pickup for them. And he's very good up the top. Also Cartwright at the, at the end. And Harris Ralph coming back now will really help their bowling stocks. I thought Andre Russell was really disappointing 
did absolutely nothing, if you ask me. So they would have hoped to get more out of him, but with Harris Ralph now in, Case Armand bowling really well. It's not trying it's not trying to do too much with it, just trying to land it, get it to spin, and let let the batters do the rest and they're gonna get out if it's a good ball. We're going to seventh is the strikers. I I think they'll finish bottom. They don't have carry, they don't have head. And they don't really have a batting lineup. Their bowling lineup's pretty good with Siddle, even though he's he's getting a bit of tap. Where's Agar? Um Rashid Khan, Forward Armand. Fuzzy's been a really good pickup for them. I was surprised when I think it was the score just let him go. I thought he would have bowled well over there on them Perth tracks, but wasn't to be. And he's found a nice home at Adelaide. He's been bowling well. Moving on to the Renegades. Renegades, I think they can find some form. Finchy hasn't had the best start to the campaign. And once he gets going, he can just lead his team to victory. It doesn't matter who he's versed and where he is. And their bowling stocks, I think, are really good. I really like Reese Topley, Kane Richardson, and Pato. So they've got a really good bowling stock. They've got a few youngsters, but Maka Harvey's hitting the ball really well at the minute, and so is Sammy Harper. So I think they can just bring some wins together. Moving on to the Ashes now, Australia have brought up a serious victory with a 3-0 win over England with two games remaining. Looking to the first test, England were... Rattled in the first first innings when they started to bat first on a deck that certainly suited the bowlers early on. And were bowled out for 147, highlighted by Rory Burns. First ball duck by an absolute peach by Mitch Stark, a Yorker that just swung back nicely. Josh Butler batted really well, I thought. Took the game on. Him and Ollie Pope started a really good um, foundation there. But they just didn't have anyone help, help around that. Pat Cummins started off to see if he's first game as captain with a fifer in the first innings. And then in the Australian innings, Davy Warner batted unreal at the top. It, he's probably been the best, one of the best, obviously one of the best batters this series, scoring 94. Harris was certainly well below under par. Marnus was good with the 74. Smudgy missed out. But then Travis said, one of the fastest Ashes hundreds ever. 152 off 148 was just a masterclass by him and really has set the tone for the Ashes series. Moving on to the next, the England second innings. That was Milan. I really loved it watching this man bat. He's so technically correct. And when he hits a cover drive, it's just one of the best things to watch in world cricket. He scored 82, along with a big partnership with Joe Root. It was just enough to get England the first innings lead, but then Australia... Only needed 20 to win and got that with one wicket now. Moving on to the second test at Adelaide. Australia batting first. Scored 473 to, 9 for 473 declared. Warner once again got out in the 90s, which he'd be very disappointed about. Scoring 95. A really slow start from him, I th thought, but really put together a good innings. Labuschagne with a, probably more a scratchy innings than what we're used to seeing from him. 103 off 305, so that England sort of really bowled well to him. And then Smithy with a 93. And then I thought Carey batted really well for his 50. Mitch Stark has been batting really well this series. Um, his average is higher than anyone for England, so it shows how well, not only how much Stark's worked on his batting, but how poor of a series um, England are having. And then Michael Nees has 35 of 24 on his debut at the end. Moving on to England's first innings. Um, the openers, once again, couldn't do a thing. Um, Milan was coming really early again. Scored a nice 80 with Root with 62. Ben Stokes, I thought this would be an innings that would sort of turn his um, fortune around, get him into the series, but no, with only scored the 34, and there wasn't much after that. Mitch Stark bowled really well, taking 4 for, and Lyon was really good with 3 for. Moving on to Australia's second innings. There wasn't much. I think they were just trying to get as many runs um, on the board in as quick as time as they could. Trav Head brought up a half century. Lavashane also brought up one. And Cam Green with a nice 30. And then with one second innings, Jai Richardson was the superstar here. 5 for 42. They put up a really good fight. Rory Burns was a nice 34. 
But once again, one of their owners still made a duck. Hamid making a six bowler. A lot of them all got starts, and then Butler 26 up to 107. Really gritty knock by him. Unfortunately, he just stepped back onto his stumps. Wokes batted really well for 44. And then once Wokes and Butler got out, there wasn't much hope for England. Moving on to the third test. Day one, Australia decided to bowl. It was really good conditions for bowling. Um, so a good toss to win for Australia. And sent England in and started off unreal. Cummins took the first three. And really set the tone for the Aussies. Joe Root was good with 50, but just played at one that he shouldn't. Stokes, he got a start once again, but couldn't go on with it, which was unfortunate for him. And Bairstow also got a start, but gave his wicket away as well. Lyon was good with three far. Cam Green bowled it exceptionally well, one for seven off eight, and Cummins took three and Stark took two. Moving on to Australia's first innings. It was not like the traditional MCG pitch, which is normally a road. It's actually really difficult to bat on. Marcus Harris really dug in with a 76. Warner made really quick 38. He was looking really good. Love shame missed out. Got a commentator's curse there. Trap head with another start. Smith with a start. All the batters really got a start. Starkey with 24 at the end as well. Jimmy Anderson bowled unreal for this test match. And shows why he's been such a good bowler for such a long time. Now, moving on to this. Dismal innings from England. They just couldn't get anything going. Root scored 28 out of their 68, so that shows. But don't take anything away from Scott Boland and Mitch Stark. Boland, 6 for 7 or 4. I've never seen anything like it apart from individual figures. I've seen the one against India, but that was a team effort. Scotty Boland just ripped through the England's top order and middle order. Stark was good the night before on a hat-trick and could have easily had a hat-trick. Don't know how Root missed that ball. He took three for 29. Cam Green was one for eight. Moving on to the next test at the SCG. My changes would be, I think you're, you've got to rest. Um, I don't think you bring Hazelwood back. I think Boland keeps his spot. If anything, you might rest um, Mitch Stark for a Richardson maybe and heads out with COVID-19. And I think Clyde is the obvious replacement. For England, I think Rory Burns has to come back in. He comes back in for Hamid. Um, Stuart Broad comes back in, I believe, for, I think, Ollie Robertson. He sort of died off a bit. He doesn't really have the pace for Australian wickets. I think Broad's a lot more consistent, has a little bit more pace than him as well. So that would be my changes. And England may also play the two spinners with Leach and Don Bess. So I think that would be a good ploy for England on a turning wicket which is generally at the SCG. Might not be over yet. Five seconds to 